Argentina is perhaps the adopted home of football, the land of Messi and Maradona, the land of Boca Juniors, River Plate, and the land that is now home to three World Cups. In Argentina, grown men cry over football, women weep and young boys and girls yelp at the sight of much coveted football stickers. Never mind their reactions when their homegrown heroes are winning the World Cup. In the old Catholic nation of Argentina, football has taken over the church as the population's chosen place of worship. Sundays are sacrosanct for different reasons now, and that is for football. It is no wonder that the history of this nation is so intertwined with its national team and its global football superstars. Despite constantly spiralling inflation, this nation forgot their problems for a few weeks to celebrate their recent triumph in Qatar. Argentina partied long and hard in the face of all its issues because football tends to trump all other societal grievances in such a place of passion for the beautiful game. Sometimes, however, passion in Argentina can boil over. Some of the country's rivalries at club level are infamous and the country's domestic league hasn't seen away fans attend games for security reasons since 2013. People have been killed in the name of football in Argentina. It's needless to say that this has taken things too far. Unfortunately, after Argentina arrived home from Qatar with their trophy, they couldn't even complete their open bus stop celebration through the city centre. Around 5 million people packed the streets of Buenos Aires and a few fans took things too far. They tried to jump onto the team bus to celebrate from a bridge above. The association then had to decide that for safety reasons, they would not complete what would have been a remarkable victory tour. It shouldn't be a great surprise then that one of the most controversial World Cups of all time took place in Argentina back in 1978. In this new series, we are going to look at the history of sports washing and propaganda related to various infamous World Cups. And we are going to start with the World Cup holders, and the tournament they hosted under a military dictatorship in a very dark time for many people in the country. Stay tuned as future episodes will also look into some of the controversy surrounding the Brazilian national team of the 70s as well as recent events in Qatar and a tournament as old as the 1934 World Cup that was hosted under the guise of Benito Mussolini in similarly dangerous times for many Italian people. For now however, back to Argentina. The rise of the dictatorship in 1976 was actually the sixth time in a century that Argentina's democracy fell to a military coup. Thus, it was unsurprising and uncommon, but that doesn't make what occurred any less severe. Jorge Rafael Videla came to power on the 29th of March 1976 in a coup d'etat disposing Isabel Perón. As has been the case with many extreme political takeovers, the regime was able to take advantage of what was an unstable period for Argentinian politics. And within days of taking control, the regime began to persecute all forms of opposition. They banned political parties and limited the human rights of civilians. What followed for Argentina were seven years of what is now widely regarded as genocide. The dirty war as it was known began and a raft of state terrorism ensued as innocents were pulled from their everyday lives to be tortured and killed. From 1976 to 1983, the regime is thought to have murdered around 30,000 Argentinians, some of whom were members of groups taking up arms to fight against the regime, but the vast majority were innocent civilians. Since those atrocities, some have had their stories heard, but many disappeared from their homes, never to be seen or heard from again. For this reason, these people are known as the disappeared, and it is impossible to know the exact number of people murdered by the regime. The 1978 World Cup in Argentina is now seen as one of the most controversial sporting events in history. A military dictatorship struck terror through many thousands of innocent Argentinian homes from 1976 to 1983. And right in the middle of the dark and bloody period, the very same murderous regime succeeded in hosting a tournament designed to cover up the atrocities that the people were facing. The 1978 World Cup may have been one of glory for Argentina on the pitch, but make no mistake about it, this trophy and this tournament were tainted. The 1978 tournament has gone down in history as an evil show of propaganda that split the nation and in a way mocked many victims. The tournament was hosted in June 1978 across six stadiums in Argentina. One of those stadiums is the unmistakable Estadio Monumental, which still gleams in its newly renovated modern day form. 
Home to River Plate, the Monumental hosted the final, where Argentina were victorious over the Netherlands. But as proved to be a theme with this World Cup, wherever there was joy, there was pain and bloodshed. Just a few blocks away from the stadium was the Higher School of Mechanics of the Navy, also known as ESMA. ESMA had been transformed into a concentration camp for opposers of the military regime. It was said that the prisoners of the camp could hear the cheers from the stadium during the World Cup, just a breeze away. Those inmates were crying out for the attention of the world, crying out for help and justice. But just as the regime had intended, the World Cup was successful in drowning out their cries, and instead, millions of eyes and ears from the rest of the world were too focused on the football a few blocks away. During the same years and even days and weeks when the World Cup parade passed through Argentina, the military government beamed smiles to the cameras broadcasting to all four corners of the globe. They did so to detract attention from the hideous atrocities that they were committing in the background. Pregnant women had been kidnapped and forced to have their children in secret prisons. Usually their babies were adopted by military families and the women were killed. Another common atrocity of the regime were the infamous death flights. Many thousands of prisoners over the years were stripped, drugged and then thrown from aircraft into the river or the sea with concrete blocks tied to their legs. Meanwhile, as these horrific events were occurring, Mario Kempes was firing Argentina to World Cup glory, and this was all that the rest of the planet could see, or at least the majority. Some Argentinian exiles were doing their best to share the story of the horrors happening at home, and in France at least, they managed to kick up a bit of a fuss. A number of Frenchmen and women had also been caught up in the ugly events in Argentina, so it was one of the few nations showing any signs of life when it came to open opposition. Two of the French that disappeared were nuns by the names of René Léonet Duquet and Alice Domont. They had been carers of General Videla's young disabled son for years. Their reward for such grace was a trip on one of the regime's death flights. In the lead up to the tournament, a group called the Proletariat Left stopped the French manager at the time, Michael Hidalgo. As he made his way to meet the team in order to set off for Argentina, he was held at gunpoint in an attempt to convince him not to play a part in the tournament. In the end, this didn't make a difference, and France joined every other team in participating in the tournament without a fuss. While some in France were trying their best to raise awareness of what was going on in Argentina, other nations were keeping their lips sealed. In 1977 and 1978, the United States sold more than $120 million in spare military parts to Argentina. And in 1977, the US Department of Defense granted $700,000 to train 217 Argentine military officers. This regime was not entirely alone. There was a misconception for many years that the absence of the great Johan Cruyff from this tournament was in protest at what was happening in Argentina. But Cruyff himself denounced this idea many times some years later, confirming he missed the tournament for family reasons only. As the Cruyff family themselves had been the victims of a serious armed robbery in their Barcelona home. For many though, the propaganda didn't stop with off-field tactics. And in fact, Argentina winning the World Cup was the most effective piece of propaganda of them all. The regime wanted to show face on the global level, but they also wanted to buy some time at home. Naturally, the more people that disappeared, the greater the opposition to the regime became. In the next video, we will continue our in-depth look at what occurred in Argentina in 1978. We will question if the dictatorship also directly affected results on the pitch, as well as the horrific events of it. So be sure to like, subscribe and let us know your thoughts. See you in the next one.